In part two of speciation graphs, we look at the species present in solution for a weak acid versus strong base titration and a weak base versus strong acid titration. Starting with our weak acid strong base titration, I'm going to use methanoic acid and sodium hydroxide as my examples. In terms of our titration curve though, we always have this generic shape where my vertical axis is labelled with pH. Now since in the beginning I'm filling my flask with 20 ml of methanoic acid, this means that my beginning pH should be quite low, as my burette is going to be filled with sodium hydroxide, which means that if I keep adding sodium hydroxide, I'm going to end up with a pretty high pH at the end. Now as I do this titration though, I can see the pH changing as follows. And you can see that I've highlighted four important points on this titration curve. I'm going to talk about each of these. At the very beginning, there's only methanoic acid present in the flask. Methanoic acid is my weak acid, so I'm looking at the species in solution for a weak acid. I've got methanoic acid in water, so I'm going to start with a big large bar for my methanoic acid. But since it is in water, it means it can dissociate in water as well. And when it does that, it's going to form methanoate, that's HCOO minus, and hydronium ions, that's H3O plus. So I'm going to show my methanoic acid bar slightly decrease as it forms methanoate and hydronium ions. Remember that in all solutions, you always have hydronium and hydroxide ions present. Now since this is a weakly acidic solution, that means that I will have more hydronium ions than hydroxide ions. Moving on, let's see what happens as we add sodium hydroxide to the solution. As sodium hydroxide is added, you can see that the hydroxide ions in NaOH are reacting with my methanoic acid. When this happens, the methanoic acid concentration decreased, and as it was being used up, it produced more methanoate ions. At this point in the titration curve, we have reached something called a buffer point. The buffer point is when I have reacted away exactly half of the methanoic acid which I started with. Note that when I was adding sodium hydroxide, I wasn't just adding hydroxide ions to my flask, but I had to add sodium plus ions as well. In this case, the sodium plus ions don't do anything with my species in solution, so you're just going to keep seeing the concentration of sodium plus increase as more sodium hydroxide is added. You can also see from the titration curve that the pH slightly increased. All that means is that my hydronium ion had decreased and my hydroxide ion concentration in the flask has increased. But since the solution overall is still below 7, it's still acidic, that means my hydronium ion concentration is still going to be slightly higher than my hydroxide ion concentration. If I then continue adding more sodium hydroxide, I eventually reach a point on the titration graph called an equivalence point. At equivalence point, I've added enough NaOH, or enough of my strong base, to completely react with all of my original acid. However, on my speciation graph, you can see that I still have a very small bar present for my methanoic acid. So you might be wondering why. Well at this point, at equivalence point, I've got so much of that weak base for my methanoate ions that there's actually an equilibrium present between my weak base and the water in the flask. And you can see in that equation that it's an equilibrium with a small amount of methanoic acid. Also from this equation you can see that hydroxide ions are being produced. This means that at equivalence point, I have more hydroxide ions than I do hydronium ions. Now that's why at equivalence point for a weak acid versus strong base titration, our pH is not 7. As for why this part of the titration curve is so steep or vertical, it's because we are no longer around the buffer point. At one pH unit above and below the buffer points, we have an area called the buffer region. A buffer region is a mixture, in this case, of the original weak acid and its conjugate base, and all buffer mixtures, or buffer solutions rather, are able to resist changes in pH. Now as I continue adding sodium hydroxide for the rest of the titration, the contents in my flask becomes dominated by sodium hydroxide. The pH in my flask becomes dominated by the hydroxide ions that are being added through the burette. But regardless of how much sodium hydroxide I add from the burette, the pH should never exceed the pH of the sodium hydroxide that is in the burette. 
In our weak base versus strong acid titration curve, I'm going to use 25 ml of ammonia as my example of a weak base, and I'm going to use hydrochloric acid as my example of the strong acid. Starting with ammonia in the flask, the contents is quite alkaline, so the pH should be above 7. The burette will be filled with hydrochloric acid, so as we're adding hydrochloric acid to the flask, the flask becomes increasingly acidic, so the pH at the end should be really low. As the titration proceeds though, the pH changes in the following way, and we're still going to discuss those four very important points in our titration curve. Starting with point number one, there is only ammonia present in the flask, so we're actually looking at a weak base. We need to look at a speciation profile for a weak base. Since there's only ammonia present, I'm going to start with a big long bar for ammonia. But since this ammonia is in solution with water, it actually also forms ammonium and hydroxide ions. Some of that ammonia ends up getting used up as it forms that ammonium and hydroxide. All solutions will have hydronium and hydroxide ions present, but since this is an alkaline solution, as in its basic, there will be a higher concentration of hydroxide ions than hydronium ions. As we add hydrochloric acid, the hydrochloric acid actually provides the flask with hydronium ions. Those hydronium ions will then go on to react with the ammonia, which is why you saw that bar decrease. In the process, it produced ammonium ions, and that's why the concentration of ammonium increased. There is no reaction with the chloride ions, and we're talking about chloride ions because as we add hydrochloric acid, we're not just adding H+, or H3O+, we also have to add in the chloride minus ions as well. But since the chloride ions don't react with anything in the flask, that means that it's a spectator ion. You also notice that the pH decreased slightly on the titration curve, but since the contents of the flask is still alkaline, that means the concentration of hydroxide ions is still a wee bit higher than the concentration of hydronium ions. As we continue adding hydrochloric acid, we eventually reach equivalence point. Now remember, at equivalence point, all of the ammonia has been reacted to form ammonium ions. But in my speciation graph, you can see that my ammonia is still present in a small amount. That's because the contents of my flask now is now dominated by the weak acid ammonium, that's NH4+. And in that equilibrium with water, since it is an ammonium solution, there is some ammonia present as well. You can also see in the equation that hydronium ions are produced, which is why at equivalence point, the pH at equivalence point for a weak base strong acid titration curve will be acidic, so pH slightly below 7. The pH decreased dramatically because we're no longer in the buffer region. Remember the buffer region consists of a mixture of the original weak base and its conjugate acid. And buffer solutions or buffer mixtures are able to resist changes in pH. As we reach the equivalence point, the integrity of the buffer solution decreased and it could no longer resist changes in pH as we added more of that strong acid, as we added more hydrochloric acid. As for the rest of the titration curve, if we keep adding hydrochloric acid, the contents in the flask becomes increasingly dominated by the addition of that excess hydrochloric acid. So I'm just going to end up forming more hydronium ions and adding more chloride ions in solution. Regardless, no matter how much hydrochloric acid I add, the pH of the contents inside the flask will never be lower than the pH of the hydrochloric acid that was in the burette.